Okay, um, we're on the final leg of this uh, N-butyl acetate synthesis. Um, if you remember, in the last extraction, after we're done with the last extraction procedure, uh, the liquid was kind of brownish in color. Um, even though it smells like an ester, I agree there is ester in it, but um, certainly it was brown in color, which tells me there's either there are impurities or some unreacted reagents in it. So, which is why we're doing the distillation. I had my distillation set up ready to go. In fact, it's already on. I got my jack stand, a mantle hooked up to a rheostat, and then to the wall unit. Uh, the rheostat is currently set about 20. Keep in mind, we have a really, really small quantity of the, the sample that we're trying to distill, so you really don't want to heat it too quick. And um, I got a Claisen head fitted to a round bottom flask, and then, uh, sorry, still head. Um, the still head, one end is connected to a thermometer, and the other end is connected to a condenser. And the in tube is the bottom one that goes to the water tap, and then the top tube is the one that's the out that goes to the sink and then that's hooked up to a um, small round bottom flask uh, that I'm using to collect the sample. Now N-butyl acetate distills around 124 to 126 so I'm going to collect anything that comes before 120 and probably collect anything that comes after 124 and I'll probably do it as I go. But uh, 124 to 126 is the, is the boiling point of N-butyl acetate. So I'll probably throw in another flask when I'm ready to collect the actual product. I'm going to leave it as it is now and collect everything that comes before around 120 or so and then collect everything that comes after. It's most likely our product, which is going to be a, a pure colorless substance. Okay. All right. I'll catch you back when I'm actually distilling the product, which will take a little bit of time. All right, stay tuned. Okay, it didn't take really that long, and even with the setting of 20 on the rheostat, I'm already at about 117, 118. And you can see there's a liquid collecting here, but it's really not that pure. You can see it's kind of murky, but we're almost there. We're hitting just 120. You can see, once we go past 120, 121, I'm going to remove this flask that's got this impure liquid. I'm guessing that's just water because it's 100 degrees. So all the water is coming out with maybe some other side product. But, okay, the temperature is almost 120. And then once it's 121, 122, I'm going to dismantle this flask right here and then collect my T-butyl acetate. Collect as much as you can and when you see either the temperature dropping down and not, or not much drop is coming out of the distal end, then that's when you turn off the heat and allow the system to cool. Alright? Okay, that's pretty much it. So I'll come back and get a quick clip when I'm actually collecting my T-butyl acetate. Okay? Alright. Okay, I don't know if you all can see the drop that's coming out of the distillate end is really clean and look at my product. It's free of any murkiness whatsoever. That's my T-butyl acetate and my temperature was around 122. Again, we didn't have all that much sample so we're not going to get a uh, get past that 124 because the vapor is dying out but around 119 120 you can start to collect because there's nothing else in that range but you don't want to collect around 100 plus degrees because that's when water boils that's probably why we have that uh, murky liquid so i'm trying to get the last bit of drop out of this and our T-butyl acetate is a clear liquid and you can see it is clear. Alright. Alright, that's my end product which is N-butyl acetate and I wafted the vapor, the, the vapor and I could clearly smell banana flavor in it. So I know for sure I have ester in it. Now here's the trick. 
around 100 degrees Celsius, water comes out, maybe some other product co distills with it. I'm not sure what that is. Um, it was murky, so again, as I said, I fitted another flask around, I guess in our case, because our sample volume is too small, the temperature actually doesn't hit 124, 125. The maximum it went was 122, but I could clearly s s see uh, clear drops of uh, the product coming out at about 115, 114. So I would start to collect anything around 114, 115 and collect uh, everything up until every last drop of it that comes out. Once you see no drop is coming out of the distillate end, you need to turn off the heat and lower the jack so that the, mat, the flask is not getting heated when there's no liquid. You will see there will be no liquid in the round bottom flask, which means Pretty much you've got every last drop out of it. You will see a brown gunk that will sit on the bottom of the round bottom flask. I'm gonna guess that's just unreacted probably in butanol and sulfuric acid, uh, which, which, is, which is indication whenever sulfuric acid is there, it burns stuff. So that's probably why that brown color was there. But anyways, if you start to collect anything that comes after around 115, 116 and collect every last drop from there into this, this flask, you can see there's hardly a murky drop. It's really clear and I can actually smell it. You can see? Ah, this is how you do it. You don't put the flask in front of your nose and smell it directly that's really potent just waft the vapor and butyl acetate is volatile so you would smell the banana flavor I do smell it it's really beautiful so that's how much I got out of whatever I've started with so I'm gonna weigh this now if you do see murky um, stuff in this product that means you got to redistill okay that's not acceptable because you got water in it and that's not pure and butyl acetate now my product looks really clean like there is hardly a single murky drop anywhere now that's what um, the msds sheet says is it's a clear colorless uh, flammable liquid and i have it right here so that's the end of the lab t butyl acetate and uh, I'm gonna weigh this and uh, maybe make another clip on how much product I got but you can see I got quite a bit of it I mean I started with only about 15 milliliters of n butanol and 11 milliliters of acetic acid so looks like I may have got close to 15 so well I may never be able to get the theoretical eel but Given the circumstances, I think I got, I was able to salvage as much of the product out of it. So don't wait till 120, okay? Start putting a new flask around 115, 114 and collect every last drop that comes out of it into this new flask and you'll be done with your experiment. All right, and then you can put it, you can weigh a clean vial and then transfer the liquid, tear off the weight, measure how much product you've got and then calculate the percent yield well I'll see you with another interesting video and I can really be happy that I was able to get that beautiful banana flavor in my product and uh, what we have is the pure t butyl sorry n butyl acetate in this flask all right so uh, check with your instructor on waste disposals you don't want to throw stuff anywhere you like there's probably containers meant for waste disposal, so check with him or her and dispose them accordingly and you'll be done with the lab. Alright, I'll see you with another video. Bye-bye.